Hey, this episode is not going to suck like the last one. No, here's what you can look forward to with the nice guys on business. Wait, so you actually have a family that has like reunions, like you get together? No, my wife's family does, though. My family does not do any shit like that. Your family no. doesn't even like each other. Exactly. They don't like me. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, looks like they picked the wrong week to stop sniffing glue. They picked the wrong week to quit drinking. They picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. Looks like they picked the wrong week to stop being assholes. The Nice Guys apologize for any inconvenience that this podcast has caused anyone. By the way, is there anyone listening who knows how to fly a plane? Need an education on how to grow your business? The Nice Guys are here to help. Learn about great customer service, networking, and how just being nice can help you prosper. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. Hey, Funkin' fans, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. You get a bonus welcome back today because we are so fired up. My name is Strickland Bonner. On the other side of the microphone, Mr. Doug Sandler. We're actually exhausted almost <laughs> from <laughs> the pre-bonus material that we've been doing before we even started the damn episode. It was like over an hour of bonus material that I'm sure <sighs> that I, I know you're going to have to cut down most of it because you used way too many, way too many names. I know. I did. I did. <laughs> you, it, you're either, are you going to beep them out? Or you just gonna the cut names out entire shall section. be changed to protect the innocent. I don't even think from the bonus material. Oh, by the way, everybody, my name is Doug Sandler. Strickland said that's Strickland Bonner over there. Um, if you don't have access to the bonus material, shame on you. Here's how you get access to the bonus material. Uh, how do they get access to the bonus material? Well, you know, it's interesting <laughs> you bring that up. That's a very good segue, Doug, because that is actually one of the topics today. We we got our wheel of topic or wheel of wheel of funkery to pick our topics, but there are a couple of topics that we have to get to before we spin the wheel first one yeah. it's a new month you know what that means uh patreon <laughs> patreon shout outs exactly we oh. have some patreon patrons who are donating yeah. and every month they get a shout out and they include yes. prosh khan greg osterdyke did we ever find out if that's the right pronunciation of his name no he's i think he's uh he's boycotting telling us the pr- yeah i think he might no no that was who's the new guy we had a new it's guy coming here. hey it's in the come on it's coming <laughs> patience patience yeah, i've yeah, prepared okay. for this i actually oh. have all my notes wow okay no you go ahead i'll just listen Okay, Michael Collins, Sunny Lake, we love you, Sonny. Sean Carpenter, of course, our number one Funkin' fan. Um, Jeff Chessman, don't tell our other Funkin' fans that Sean's the number one fan. Uh, Tomas Conifre, Paul Morena, he is our first, fun- what did we call him, the original Funkin' fan? I think He's it's been Paul Marina. I think it's Marina. Did I say Morena? Yeah. I'm sorry, Paul. He just got off a cruise. He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't really care. He just doesn't <laughs> he, care. Well, right you now. know what? By the time he actually gets a chance to listen to this episode, you know, he's probably like eight episodes behind. So we'll be a month <laughs> later and we'll probably be dead by then, Strick. Anyway. I actually sent him the yeah. recordings that he could listen to on the before they went out. That's yeah, how that special was, Paul I, is. I hadn't even heard what we had I done know, yet. Right? It's so Pretty it's cool. so magical. <laughs> it's so magical. Okay, Marco, England, of course. Mar. Thanks, Mar. Um, and, Love you. And then Stephanie Sir. Island. Yeah. And, and then our last three are important. There are a couple things I want to talk about. Yeah. Ryan Bokros, who is our newest, most vocal Funkin' fan on the Slack group. And then Craig Hugim. All right. Now, now a couple of these last three. Why, right? uh, why, why does everyone, can we just, we need to give them aliases because their names are way too challenging. I think we call <laughs> them like Daredevil. <laughs> and, uh, and what's the other guy's name? What's the, uh, uh, Ryan Deadbolt? Or Deadbolt. <laughs> Deadbolt. <laughs> what's a, what's a de- de- <laughs> Deadpool. Deadpool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah. I wanted to give them all superhero names because their names are too fucking hard to pronounce. Okay. So here's a couple things about Patreon. First of all, if you want to hear the bonus material, yeah. all right. You have to be a Patreon patron. So all of the, the fuckery that we talked about at the beginning of the show, you can hear if you are at least a $1, one dollar a month is all you got to donate. Um, if you didn't hear your name on the list, it uh-huh. means you're not donating at least five bucks a month. Yes. Are we, are we blackmailing you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Basically we're it, five bucks a month. Come on guys. It's not that much. So you can donate a dollar or two, but you're not going to hear your name at the beginning. Tell of the them month. how to but get there. They have no idea. You haven't told them yet. Patreon.com forward slash nice guys. It's yeah, that easy. It, yeah, it is that easy. And we, and we have such a fun time. in, in the and, and don't forget access to the Slack group too, Strick. That's oh, like, yeah, $5 <laughs> access to the Slack group. Now, there's a secret, okay? Ooh, I got my decoder we, ring. We do a lot of interviews, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Three a week. Mm-hmm. Right? Three. They, they can't all be winners, 
right? I mean, we have had a couple of people that have been so bad that we Ooh. basically said, look, we can't use it, mm. but it doesn't happen that often. But come on, they can't all be freaking A1 perfect amazing, right? Hey, let me tell you this. Out of the, th- uh, we've had 360 some episodes so far. Out of the 360, we've done maybe almost three, probably 280 or something like that interviews. Only mm-hmm. two of them have not made the cut. At all, right. <laughs> right, but right. there are That's some that are still going to be like, eh, maybe mm. not so great. Well, yeah. We have a little code mm-hmm. that uh, there's a certain word that we say in right. our intros right. that if we think the interview is not so good, we say yeah. the word. Now, the only way you can find that word out mm-hmm. <laughs> is through the bonus material. <laughs> you have to donate to Patreon. Like, I could say the word right now and tell you what it is, but I'd have to beep it out. Hey, you you know have what's great? to be a Patreon patron to find out. So that way that when you're listening to the beginning and you hear the word, which I'm going to beep out. You ready, Doug? When you hear the word... That means this interview is not so good. You may not want to waste your time with it. Hey, you know what, Strick? Hmm. Almost sounds like. <laughs> it, they sound a lot alike, and I'm going to be beeping both of those out, Doug. That's okay. I'll be beeping out the secret word, and I'll be beeping out your age as well. Yes. That's it exactly. That Wait a minute. Exactly. Are you telling me that sounds like. Yeah, I think they sound a lot alike. At least at the recording end of this, they will sound exactly alike because they will both sound like this. And that's where I insert the tone of the beep. Of, uh, yes, that's it. Yes. Okay, that's good. All right, so uh, don't forget patreon.com forward slash nice guys. That's how you get all the bonus materials. That's how you get access to the Slack group. That's how you get access to the the word that we just gave away. Exactly. To and know my, that. Ma- now, the other thing is, everybody's got a different yeah. opinion of interviews. There are interviews that Doug has said, oh my God, this was amazing. And I yeah, listened to yeah. it and I'm like, it wasn't that great. And others where you've gone, God, it's so fucking boring. And I found it interesting. So, you know, it, it could be good. But okay. So, it just, we didn't so think it was good. I want to give them a piece of information that they that they can be aware of, even if they don't uh, subscribe. So, so that you can participate in the fun, even if you're not necessarily a, a, a Patreon contributor. So, let me share that. Can I share that with them? Is that okay? Sure, go for it. Okay, and if you don't like it, you can just edit this out or beep it out. You know, one of the questions, now, I don't even know if any of these have aired yet. I've just started asking the questions within the last couple of weeks, and we're about three or four weeks behind uh, lag time on the uh, on the when, on when it actually airs versus when I'm actually doing the recording. Mm-hmm. One of the questions I now ask everybody is, if you were to get an invitation in the mail, and it were to have a dress code on the invitation, wait a minute. This isn't the, this isn't part of it. No, yeah, this no, is no, a whole this different. this is good. No, no, we totally is, need to right. mention this one a couple times because yeah. we're, we're ultimately what we're trying to find out. We're trying yeah. to figure out if the people that we interview, that you interview, right? Right, right. Do they actually listen to the show even, you know, a little bit? And so this is our little inside secret question. So the question is, if you were to get an invitation in the mail, what would you like the dress code to be? If they answer things like black... Invitation for a party. Right, invitation for a party. If they answer anything except for this answer, they don't listen to the show. If they answer too, too optional, Mm -hmm. (laughs) then we know that they listen to the show. I'm not going to give them that as a choice. I'm not going to give them any choice. I might set it up with an example like, do you want to see black... You want to hear black tie or do you want to hear casual (laughs) chic? If they say too, too optional, we know immediately that the entire... They are a listener. They are a listener of the show. Yes, and we're going to keep mentioning that because, you know, if we if we don't mention it in like you know 50 episodes we can't expect people to remember that so probably every other week or so we're going to bring it up so if you are a listener and you think you might be interviewed at some point yes the the answer when we ask the question of if you got an invite to a party what would what would your preferred dress code be too too optional (laughs) yep i'm all good with that Yep, yep, yep. Um, okay, so wait a minute. A couple things. I, I need to finish up with the three okay. Patreon patrons that are important. Um, oh. Craig Hugim. Okay, right. Craig is in Canada, and he has helped us with our WordPress site. Thank goodness. I know I, I reached out weeks ago, and I'm like, fucking help us, because we can't yeah. find it. We can't get the player to work right. Craig... I thought Craig would actually just go in and like take either the simple podcast player that exists already that's supposed to be good and make it work. He actually, I think, like created his own freaking player. Whoa. The guy is kind of a genius. So he, he helped coat? us fix all that. We're going to, yeah, I think he, he does a lot. He, he works a day job, but he does a lot of WordPress stuff like on the side for fun. I told him, hey, I want to give you a shout out on the show. Like, you know, I want to plug your company and he's like yeah. you know i work for somebody else which like, okay that's cool it's all good but then he but, became a patreon patreon i'm like I know, and then shit, he became not- a patron so, after he helped us out with this on wordpress at no charge whatsoever 
he still became a patron. I love yeah, that. Yeah, so not only is he doing the work, but he is also paying to do the work. <sighs> That's very rare that you can hire somebody that will actually pay you to let you do their job. <laughs> we are going to send him a t-shirt because we love him. Yeah, and then yeah, speaking, yeah. Speaking of t-shirts, we have a $20 Patreon level mm. where you get a t-shirt. Nobody has signed up for it yet, so we're, we're making a little bit of a twist, okay, Doug? Oh, I, I think, oh, oh. I hope you're okay with this, but mm, we, we okay. have a $10 level, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think at the $10 level, we can't give a t-shirt away immediately because it costs us more than 10 bucks to make a t-shirt, right? Right. What if after three months, like after you've paid $30, then we send you a t-shirt? Hmm. Well, I'll leave it. How many do we, how many do we, we have, have in one that, in right that? now? Stephanie, Stephanie Sersland. Uh -huh. It's her third month starting May 1st, starting yesterday. Hmm. So she will have donated a total of $30. Is she the only one that's putting in 10 bucks a month? No, no, not at all. That's what's great about it. Here, let me look at our patrons because we have a couple more. Uh, we have Prosh. Um, where's my patrons manager here? Right here we go. Okay. Um, so Prosh and Greg mm -hmm. Osterdyke have both already donated. It'll be $20 as of May 1st. Okay. And Ryan is doing his first $10 this month. So next month, we would send a t-shirt to Prosh and Greg. And the month after, assuming that he sticks around, which after he sees the conversation on the Slack group, Ryan may decide he's not going to stick around because we're a bunch of assholes on the Slack group. <laughs> but if he sticks around for three months, then he'll get a t-shirt too. This is a this is a good plan. I, I am I am on board with this plan. So you're saying three months into a ten dollar contributors uh um providing of the ten dollars, they get a they get a t shirt. Yeah, exactly. And so maybe okay. we'll encourage some people instead of donating five bucks to donate ten bucks because you get a t shirt after three months. I don't know that it's going to encourage them, but I, I'm on board with you. I mean, I'm staring at okay. these t-shirts. We have, you know, dozens of t-shirts that are that are at the ready right now. Yeah. And how great would it be to be able to see a, a t-shirt out there in the, in the wild? I love it. Good plan. Huh. Okay. I love it. Okay, I, cool. I'm good. No, I'm noticing on our, um, on our Lipson account, Strickland, mm -hmm. that um, next week, next mm -hmm. week, that'll be next week. Next that, that's week. the week that this show is airing right now, okay. actually. Okay. We will be over half a million downloads. I know. That was one of my topics. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that is unfucking believable that you people are downloading that many episodes. What the hell have we done? It's I great. Don't I love know. it. What, what have we done to deserve this? I have no idea. This is like the wrath of, uh, of iTunes coming back to us. I, iTunes is, is, like, is uh, like thumbing their nose at us saying, uh, nanny, nanny, boo, boo. You can't, <laughs> you can't have anything from me, but you can get everything that you need from Overcast. And that's I what know, we're right? doing. It is. Yeah, we're going to go over half a million downloads. We almost, uh, we just slightly shy by a thousand downloads last month, slightly shy in the month of April, what our March numbers were of 60,000. We were basically 59,000 for the month of April. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, we're going to, we're going to kick butt though. It, the trend is going to be, cause I'm seeing the, the last few weeks of, uh, the last two weeks of April, the trend is going to be definitely to go over 60,000 in the month of May. And that's going to be cool. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And you know, 10% of all of our U.S. downloads are from San Francisco. Oh. And I think we, that's actually even more than Baltimore and D.C. combined, which is where Doug and I live. Like, you combine Baltimore and D.C., which is probably a much bigger market than just San Francisco. And San Francisco is downloaded more. So I think we have to thank Martin Prosh for that. And you know why? Hmm. Because I think that uh, the gay people like you and me. Could be. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I think so. I think so. I mean, I, I Hey, am, you know what? Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, hell no. Whatever it is to my advantage. Hey, if which, you are gay, Which, by the way, are, I'm not saying not that there's anything wrong with being gay, because of course there's nothing wrong with being gay, but not that there's anything wrong with being gay and listening to the nice guys on business. Oh, no. Totally nothing wrong with that. And and more power... It, listen, I you know, I'm, I'm still up in the air. I, I'm trying to figure out where I go, where I fall, so... <laughs> You mean where, where you personally fall in yeah, your sexuality? I just, I, I'm very confused. I'm very I'm very confused right now. You know, I've, dude, I've, I'm not I'm not gay. I just let him suck my dick. <laughs> I was just helping. Brother it's such out. an offensive joke. I really should not have even said that. It's so bad. It's really a bad that's, joke. That's not good. That's not it's good. Not, you, I don't no, know if we're gonna no. leave that in or not. I can't decide. Mm, it's pretty bad. I don't know. You'll probably forget it. Do you listen to when you actually record uh, edit the the episodes? Do you listen? I mean, like for the words, I know you listen for pauses and things sometimes to try to tighten it up a little bit. Speaking of gay, to tighten it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah we're already, this is not good. Well, at least we're 15 we're minutes really in. Bad. Anybody that was going to get offended probably is come and gone already. <laughs> oh, I hope so. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, 500,000 downloads. Holy shit, that is a lot of fucking downloads. That's it's ridiculous. Crazy. It's crazy. Okay. All right, can we get through the speed read now? Because we got a lot of topics to get to Wait that we minute. haven't. We're 15 minutes into the episode. We yeah. haven't even read what the topics are? We've actually hit a couple of them already, oh. so that's okay, oh, I think. Okay. But no, we okay. have not read what the topics are yet. Okay. All right, I'm ready. You go ahead whenever you're ready. All right, we're ready? Yep. And this is include some of mine. I put someone here too oh, that you geez. haven't seen yet. Okay. How many total do we have? I'll... Uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay. Sixteen. Well, seventeen, including the ones we've gotten to. Oh, shaving update from six. So it's actually sixteen because that was one of mine too. Okay, oh, good. nice. Okay. All right, I'm ready. Okay, speed read. Okay, ready? Yeah, Strick's gonna do the uh, the speed read right here. You know what that is if you've listened before. <laughs> yeah. <it's pretty> good. <laughs> this is this is where Sean Carpenter loses his mind because he listens at one and a half speed. So <laughs> don't blow right, here up. We- <sighs> Almost 500,000 downloads questioning everything you do. Editing with a 10 key mouse, psychological safety. We think so differently. Testing has absolutely no value to anyone except those giving the test. Crossing the line as a service pro. Trump, this isn't easy. The sounds of a fan makes while watching sports in public. How to know what time to just move on personally and professionally? Money is a big circle. Overcast, turnkey, Amazon, Slack, fun. Tutu, the best answer ever. <laughs> You're going to beep that out. Oh, no. T- no, no, Tutu that is okay. Yeah, that's the right. very The very last one yeah, that you put. That's- is not good for <laughs> interviews. That one I'm going to beep out. Yes. I will read it, but I'm going to beep out the yeah. word that is not good. The secret word is... Beep. I'm not going to say it. So, is, so that let me go back to my first my first question to you just a moment ago about yeah. the editing process. Do you do you listen to? Because I used to think that you just kind of skimmed over it, but now with all of the little quirks and things that you the things that you got to edit out, you probably yeah. have to go back and listen to each word. It depends. I do listen to quite a bit, and I definitely, as the episode goes on, I probably get lazier. So, like if there's something late in the episode that we say that I should cut out, or I might miss it. Yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but yes, that's, I. That's definitely. usually when the most of the people are going to probably have tuned out by that point. Exactly. Nobody's really listening that far. <laughs> I'm hoping they listen to the entire episode. Hey, I hope so. the the, uh, the last episode you actually did it was great at the at the end of the episode. Mm-hmm. I mean the th- last Thursday. Sorry, last Thursday's episode. You actually yeah. put in like a little whatever you call the Ferris Bueller kind of. Close. Yeah, like even after the outro. What what the hell was it? I can't even remember now. I don't remember anymore, but I do remember. I, I now listen to the very end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, the very end. Yeah. So like for those of you who listen all the way through, I, you know, Steve O'Brien does his outro. And then a lot of times I'll have a, a little drop from Steve as the music's fading out. You know, like I'm getting sick of these guys anyway. Oh, I, th- I think, is this still on? Am I still recording? Whatever. And then I'm doing another Easter egg after that every once in a while, Easter if there's something egg. good. Oh, I know. There was one with, with Mar, where Mar was on oh, the yeah, show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You did her outtake. <laughs> right. And at the very end, it was like, yeah, that was a lot of fuckery. That was good. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, a funny show. Whatever, something good. like that. Um, Are we ready? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. So, do, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, let's finish, baby. Mm, the Wheel of Funkery is spinning. What? Do we have Strickland? Um, uh, Overcast. We kind of talked about Overcast already. Do we, is it like we need to recommend Overcast? Is that what you want to talk about? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Because uh, I, I just an, an Overcast update. We were we were pathetic in the last month or so. We fell to three, and then we fell to four, which was a horrible spot. We made the we made the announcements last week that you should recommend us on Overcast. Hit the little gold star, mm-hmm. and we're back up to two. It is just that simple. All you need to do is go to Overcast. There is a little star. Just make sure that it is actually highlighted. So when it's highlighted, you've pressed the button. You've pressed the the uh, the, the recommend button and uh and you recommend the episode you can go back and do that to any number of episodes you don't even have to stop listening to the episode that you're doing in order to do that you can just go back to the last 50 episodes or so maybe 100 whatever you want to and just go ahead and recommend us if you didn't listen to the episode <laughs> okay all right, no offense, Doug, but I'm, I'm realizing a little long, a little that we well, it's not that that one piece was a little long, but yeah. in the context of the show, we, yeah. we've yeah, done a I lot of begging it. already I, so far. I mean, oh. we've been begging Patreon for like five minutes, and then oh, yeah. it's probably we'll wait till Thursday to beg more. Okay, that's <laughs> good. That? That's good. What is our next topic? Well, it wasn't strictly? like you were really going long, but no, under the no, circumstances. you're good. You're good. I, I appreciate you letting me know that. Uh, Trump, this isn't easy. 
Yeah, I, 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 so I was reading an article. I, I don't think it was even on Huffington Post, which is where I get my, most of my rag. <laughs> it was, it was just like it was through CNN or one of the official news wires. I, Trump said it, this job is not easy. Yeah. It's not as easy as I expected it was going to be. This is so much harder than my last job. This is. I gotta the, find like, the, No shit, running <laughs> the fucking country. You didn't think that was going to be difficult? It's not like he's just running a country. He's running the United States, which is the most powerful. So. You are you are like what do you, what would you consider this? You're like the Grand Poobah. If you're you the were the leader in, of the free world, really. Yeah. I mean, come on, that's kind of what it is. I, I want to find I want to find the exact quote. If I if I could find it, no, that it's would so be, ridiculous. Who, who knew healthcare was so complicated? Who knew war <laughs> was so complicated? Who knew that taxes were so complicated? I mean, I haven't paid any in years, so I didn't think it was complicated. Oh, oh my gosh. It's just, uh, it's I love my previous life. I had so many things. Trump told Reuters in a in an interview. Reuters. This is what I say. Reuters. You said Reuters. Oh, sorry. That's like Roto Reuter, <laughs> like when you call no, a plumber. No. I was calling it like it's the uh, like it's the uh, the gas station. Isn't that Reuters? Reuters? Is that Reuters also? I don't know the gas station. I thought you were like ga- Reuter. Yeah, there's a gas station. I, I forget if it's Rudders or Rooters or what it is, but it's not Reuters. Oh, Rudders. I think there's a gas station <laughs> called Rudders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love my previous life. I had so many things going, Trump to, uh, told Reuters in an interview. This is more work than in my previous life. I thought it would be easier. That is a fucking exact quote from Reuters, uh, from Trump uh, through the uh, the news agency Reuters. Now, come on. Really? You know, it was interesting. I was watching Meet the Press this morning. <laughs> They had Mike Pence on, like the vice president, right? Yep, yep. And and Chuck Todd calls him out on that. He's like, uh, he says, the president said that he didn't think this job would be so hard, right? Mike Pence, the first thing out of his mouth was, he said, well, I don't think he actually meant this is harder than I thought it would be. I think he just meant that it was, you know, more complicated. And and I said, harder than it was going to be is his exact fucking words. What do you mean you don't think that's what he meant? That's exactly what he said, word for word. Well, I think what he what he said was, I thought it would be easier. That's different than I didn't think it would be this hard. God, unbefucking-leavable. Oh, my God. Yeah, between those two ridiculous between those two and, and who the fuck is there who's the press secretary again spicer sean spicer yeah oh my <laughs> between god between spicer the uh the vice president and trump i mean it's like uh it, i don't know it's like a freaking three-ring circus you, you give each oh, one man. a ring and let's find out who can be more of an idiot it's unbelievable office. and the hard part about the politics is that Everybody now, it's so divided, and we've talked about this before, but let's say I'm a Democrat, right? And let's say maybe I'm in Congress, and maybe I've got some ideas that I think Trump does. It's not such a bad idea, and maybe we should compromise. The problem is that all the other Democrats, and Democrats and Republicans alike do this, right? It's, hey, no, 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 you got to stand by us. We need to get rid of him in four years, so you can't agree with anything he says. It's like, no, Mm. I thought we were here to make the country better, (laughs) not to just get our guy into office. Right. I mean- uh, mm. For for eight years, the Republicans' number one agenda was get rid of Obama. You know what? I thought your number one agenda should be run the fucking country. <laughs> I mean, you're stuck with the president. Work with him. Don't fucking. Uh, uh, Trump is a little me. upset that he's not able to drive. I like to drive. He said, I can't drive anymore. I enjoy driving. They won't even <laughs> let me drive around the White House circle. I don't get it. I don't understand. You're really in your own little cocoon. Oh my God. Yeah, he's in his own little cocoon, except he still goes to Mar a Lago every fucking weekend. He's in a cocoon because his head is actually the same material. <laughs> <laughs> that cocoon is made out of. It's his hair. That's right. His hair is the cocoon. Have you ever seen one of those, uh, like a gypsy moth spin a spin one of those oh my God. freaking cocoons around himself? Yeah, that's So he can much become it. a beautiful caterpillar. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Anyway. Oh crap. Okay. Let's spin the let's spin the uh, wheel of funkery one more time. Let's yeah, see what I comes think up it's next. Definitely time to spin. Let's see what we got. What's the next topic today? today. <laughs> I do I do love our new wheel of funkery. Oh, money is a big circle. Yeah. You ever, I was paying my bills today as I, as I do at the end of the month, every mm-hmm. month, because the beginning of the month is coming. 
And I know that I've realized this before, but maybe it just it just finally just hit home because this was a month that um, oftentimes April is a challenging month when it comes to paying bills in the month of May because there's a lot of holidays in the month of April, including mm-hmm. Easter and some of the Jewish holidays as well. And there's almost like a week of downtime for income. So for me, what are you drinking? Water, just water. <laughs> oh, rats! I thought you were drinking something good. <sighs> Too early in the morning for I had some. And I, and I realized that that money comes out. I mean, money comes into my account through the income, and it goes out through paying my bills. And it's just like it, all you need to do is just keep a little bit more money in that circle than you have going out of the circle, and you can actually make a really big impact in this world on your life. <laughs> if only yeah, it was just, that easy. It's just a big circle. It, it's mm-hmm. so it's so stupid. I just wish that it would. Just, it, money. I saw uh, what was it? Um, uh, Mo Gall that who came on the show just a few weeks ago Mm -hmm. Uh, interesting quote that he said and i can't remember if this was in the actual interview or in the pregame that i that i did with him but he's like money's a lie and it's true money is just money is not honest money doesn't buy you anything it's it's just it is a huge circle of income outgo and it's the stuff that you hold on to is the is the stuff that has value i guess i i don't Mm -hmm. know i mean what's your what's your perception on money the stuff that you hold on to has value like like the shit that no, no, no. Not the shit that you buy, but whatever you do with what you have left over is really the important thing. It's not what you do. It's, you know, that I look at, I look at my income as it's not even really income because it's most of it, it goes out the door. So as soon as I get it, it's gone. It just happens. I just happen to hold on to it. I'm just borrowing it from whoever I had it from for 30 days until then and then I got to let it go again. Yeah, it's just a big circle. You know, like, can't we just cut Social Security short and just, can't I just write the check to my mom for a couple thousand dollars a month? Because why do I, ha- why does there have to be a middleman involved? I mean, the middleman is stepping all over it and it's called the federal government, right? <laughs> <laughs> have to start with our technical problem music. <laughs> For any of you listening in stereo, too, like if you're listening with headphones, the music's really cool. It's got like two different, like most of the drum yeah. tracks and bass are on one side yeah, and the rest of the music's on the other Shh. side. It's good. It's good. Okay, anyway, that's enough of that. So- <laughs> We should just we should just play that the entire the entire episode in the background the whole episode on a loop right yeah just to drive that, everybody nuts that would really make editing very challenging I think yes oh my god yes it would sound funny anyway so uh, oh okay so they're talking to uh, I can't remember if it was Pence that said this or the Treasury Secretary I think it was actually Pence basically Pence said hey. Our growth is not good right now, like the country, the overall growth of the country, right? And uh, under Obama, the, uh, the the deficit went way up, right? Our national deficit went way up. I don't know if that's true or not, but let's just assume it is, right? Our deficit went way up. This is a problem. And so Chuck Todd says, okay, well, the tax plan that Trump has put forward, yes, it encourages growth, but it will also add to the deficit, and Pence said, hmm. and, and by the way, for those of you who don't know, uh, from what I've heard, Trump's tax plan is totally predicated on 3% growth of the GDP, I think. And assuming that with what he does, like give the uh, corporations big tax breaks, it's all the fucking trickle down from the 80s, right? Give the companies tax breaks and so they will invest more money and they will hire more people and it'll help grow the country, okay? So... If the country does grow at a regular 3% rate, presumably within a couple of years, it everything will get better and the deficit will go down. But in the short term, it will absolutely positively add to the deficit. So okay. the next thing he says, Chuck Todd says to Pence, he's like, okay, so this is going to add to the deficit. And Pence basically says, uh, he says, do you argue with that? Do you disagree? And Pence said, you know, we have to spur growth. Okay, so first of all, the first thing he says is, Obama increased the deficit. That's that's horrible. He's such a horrible person. Um, This plan will increase the deficit too. No, but we have to have growth. Oh, okay, so it's okay for you to raise the deficit because you have a plan that hopefully, maybe, possibly will reduce it down the road, but it's not okay for Obama. Bomb. Ugh, do you have any? Uh, do you have any? Do you have any NPR music that you might be able to throw in there? Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that this is a fucking NPR show, and and then well, maybe it'll be good because then we could probably be the number one in our category rather hey, than yeah. No, no. You know what I'm gonna do? Hmm. 
<laughs> you did that, that on yourself. By the way, that is for me. I'm spinning <laughs> yeah, I, the I wheel did. on myself. You totally had to spin the wheel on yourself. I wish I had the button over here. <laughs> Crossing the line as a service pro, waiter or bartender. Oh, geez. Okay, so I had dinner last night. I don't even want to mention the name of the restaurant because I, because I really do think that this was a this was an employee issue, not a not a restaurant, not like not a, a management philosophy. issue. Yeah, it was not a management issue because I could see how the manager was handling uh, the bartender at this place that I was, and mm-hmm. I was feeling like they got to get rid of this guy. Mm-hmm. So I'm at the restaurant last night, and there was um, there were five or six people at the bar. So and there was a whole bunch of people in the restaurant, and there were people outside on the patio. So enough people were around that could hear this guy talking. So um, he's also working the service bar too, which can be challenging in a busy restaurant because you're working the bar and you're working the service bar too. So you're moving in a million different directions. So it took him a little while before he was able to to take my order. I hear him talking to... um, Oh, they, they were the um, the Capitals game. The uh, um, what the hell's the name of the playoffs game? The playoffs game. Thanks. Yeah, the hockey game was on the was on the air, and he happens to mention a player that's that plays. I don't think it was on the Capitals, but uh, on the Caps, but another team. And he goes, "Oh, that guy's Russian." And he goes, "Okay, I mean that was cool. I mean I don't think there was anything wrong with the guy being a Russian player." And he goes, "You got to watch those Ruskies." So then I'm thinking, <laughs> hmm, all right, that's uh, that's probably skating a little close, not realizing who's I, 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 is is Ruski a bad is is that is that like a bad thing? Is no, that well? It's funny too. He said we're talking about a hockey game, and what did you just say? I think that's skating a little close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I got it. Now and of course, in, in when you're playing hockey, come on, there's going to be a lot of Russians. There's going to be a lot of Canadians. I mean, come on. Gotta watch them Ruskies. Like, if he said it as a joke, like he was friendly and knew the guy, mm-hmm. okay, maybe. But yeah, if he said it like like he was really serious, like, okay. um, All right. yeah, that's a fucking problem. Yeah. All right. All right. So let me take it to the next level. It's like level. you might as well say, gotta watch them fucking Muslims, you know? Like, R- right. Huh? Well, right. Well, then I started thinking, well, he has no idea who I'm connected to or right. anything. And, and he says, he says, you know, you won't find any black people playing ice hockey. I'm like, what oh the my fuck? God. So, so wait a minute. When he said you got to watch those roosters, he said it to you. He was talking to the bar. He was oh, talking okay, to okay. the bar. Everybody words, that's like, he right. had a, probably a buddy that was sitting behind the bar. They were having a conversation, or maybe the guy became a buddy as he was sitting there. Right. And I'm thinking, okay, well, that. I guess I I guess I gotta let the comment like that slide, but I don't have to. I, he has no clue who no. I am or or what he, or how he has just offended me at you all. Won't see any black people <laughs> playing ice hockey. Okay, so so wow. again, I didn't. I'm not saying anything. I'm just thinking this guy's a fucking moron. What a yeah. what an idiot. And then he just. He makes this. I, I know we womanize on the show, and I don't. I don't. You know, we do it in. Maybe we're doing it. Oh fuck! I don't know. Maybe I'm about to paint myself into a corner here. But <laughs> but he completely just bashed a woman that he works with by making some sexual innuendo to her while in front of the guys at the bar. I don't even remember what the comment was, but it was something like, "I gotta get. I gotta come around you. You know, like I gotta get around you." And and she's like, "What?" <laughs> he goes, and and he basically said. Yeah, I gotta come around you, boy. I would, l- I'd like to do that or something. It was just like such uh, a, such a comment that was. I'm like, dude, you fucking, wow. you can't say shit like that. Yeah, you can't say shit like that. So wow. uh, the hostess comes up to him a little bit later on and wants to order the an employee meal. I guess she's like, can yeah. I order a meal? And he's like, you can do anything you want. <sighs> and wow. I said, I said to, just to the guy sitting next to me, I'm like. Is he is he being real here? I mean, is this is this like is this legit? I mean, is does he even realize who is sitting at the bar with him? Uh, you know, I I could have been the the victim of uh, of um, of spousal abuse. I could have been I could have been the son of a black guy. I could have mm-hmm. been you know I I don't know. I just I kept thinking that's kind of weird, and um and I'm now feeling a little offended by it. So I guess you could take the philosophy like we take on the show. Well, if you don't like it, you really just don't have to, you don't have to listen to our show. If you don't like it here at our restaurant, the way we talk, I guess you don't have to eat here. So Mm -hmm. am am I, am I giving myself a taste of my own medicine or tell me if there's a difference or not a difference? I'm curious what your spin on it is. You know, man, that's a, that's a tough one. I think what I would do, I would probably go to a manager, right? 
mm-hmm. and I would basically say, look, dude, I want to let you know. Or you know what? And if I didn't want the conflict, I know there are a lot of people out there that really don't yeah, like conflict. Right. I'm just curious I might what to just, do. I might put this up on like Yelp or something on a social media site, like a specifically a review site. I would, but like if I had the balls to, I would probably go to a manager and I would go, dude, <laughs> we're leaving. Okay. And I want to tell you, I don't think we're going to come back. And I want to tell you why. Mm-hmm. And I would basically explain to him, hey, this is, I don't know if you know this. It's a, you, He's your bartender. So I'm assuming that you know that this is the way he is. But here are the comments that he's made in the last 10 minutes. I'm like, and you know what? It's free country. He can say whatever he wants. But I'm telling you, I'm not coming back because of those comments. Right, so right. if there's something you want to do to try to change that or tell me I'm wrong, you know what? I'm open to it, but I'm telling you, this guy is bad for your business. Yeah, that was bad. Not only the fact that he, uh, it, one other thing that he did, he just completely let a burp out as loud as he could possibly do it. I'm like, and you know what? Hey, you're a bartender. It's casual. Okay, I can see that. That's okay. Like, if you're trying really? to be silly, look, I don't think it's funny. I right. wouldn't find it entertaining, but right. I don't find everything that everybody says entertaining. There's a, It's a fine line between entertaining and, and offensive, and all of those things, that's everything you just mentioned, man, that's... That is offensive. You just yeah. you don't go there. You don't do that shit. Yeah, I, I was uh, I was I was feeling a little bit like you know if the service was a little better, <laughs> maybe I could have put up with it. But it was that and bad service too. <laughs> so uh, those those things all in in line really made it so it was not a very positive experience for me at the uh, at the restaurant. Again, I'm I I I, uh, I hesitate to mention the name of the restaurant because well, uh, and obviously you didn't do or say anything, right? No, I didn't say anything. Yeah, I weak? would totally go up on social media and 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 call them out. But I would do it not like Facebook. I mean, you could, you know, but I don't think it would be as effective if you really want to try to make a change, which. I think you should. I there's some things it's like, eh, whatever, let it go, right? This is pretty bad, I think. And yeah, I would yeah. totally go up on Yelp hmm. and basically say, Hey, look, I, I you don't know the name of the bartender, I guess? I do actually remember the name of the bartender. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, I'd call him out. I would totally say, I would. I mean, that's just me, you know. I would basically say, Look, we we like this place. We've been before, but you know, we went and there was a bartender, his name was Mike and, and his name was this Ray. Is what he, it, his name is what? Ray. So you're going to say his name, but you won't say the name of the restaurant. Yeah, because, yeah, I'll say his okay. name. I mean, his name was Ray. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't really, that narrows it down to like one in a million. All right. So, yeah. And you know what I'm thinking about this? If you're not saying the name of the restaurant, you're not going to go up on Yelp and post this. You don't, you don't have the balls. You're not going to do it. I'll do it for you. You tell me the restaurant. I'll pretend that it was me sitting at the bar and I'll post it because that's All some right. bullshit. Oh, okay. Okay. That's some total bullshit. Yeah. I would totally go up on Yelp because that's the thing. You know, we've talked about this. You can't hide nowadays, you know, with social media everybody is a critic and man you screw something up you you Mm. can't cover it up everybody's going to know everybody's going to talk about it and they're going to go up on travelocity or they're going to go up on yelp or they're going to go to speedia or whatever they're going to post a review and some i'm not looking for the wrath of ray i'm not no but you know what the other thing is this very well could be like you I'm, i'm sure you've heard situations okay let's like look at the the priest with the catholic church right like Mm -hmm. one person comes forward and everybody else is like yeah me too me too me too because they just didn't have the the strength to say it before this could be the same thing like nobody has put the post up yet because they're like "Eh, whatever whatever." (laughs) but you could put that up and you could get responses like no doubt that guy's an asshole like i don't go back to that restaurant because if he's working i don't want to deal with it i'm not gonna Mm, sit at his bar i'm not i'm not ready to be the catalyst for the act for the action i i would sooner take it up with directly with the manager i feel like if i talk to the manager i'm i'm talking to a a, somebody that would be a little bit more empathetic to to making sure that that there that there's change okay you know what that's a good idea i'm gonna hold you to this because you're right the the internet everybody loves to bitch on the internet because you can be somewhat anonymous i'm not necessarily afraid of being um vocal about it but in this particular case i don't think this is a i don't think this is the philosophy i could sense when the manager came around and had to fix something that was in the register that the that ray had fucked up Mm -hmm. i i sense that the manager really did not 
like Ray either. And I and I kept thinking. Oh, and the other thing that he did, which was really interesting, was they have a um, they have an employee meeting mm-hmm. uh, today. As a matter of fact, the day of this recording, which is Sunday, they had a they had an employee meeting, and it was a three hour meeting because I was on Jesus. there on a Saturday night, mm-hmm. and uh, he probably was going to get out of there. I think he said he was going to get out of there like eleven o'clock. He was talking mm-hmm. to his buddy at the bar, and he said that um, yeah, and I got to fucking come back tomorrow at like eight o'clock in the morning for a three hour meeting. How stupid is that? Uh, you know, that's kind of dumb. And, and that's him talking like, again, I could be Mr. You know, XYZ corporate uh, uh, sh- secret shopper. Yeah, I think that's stupid, but I wouldn't call that offensive. No, I think no, that's, no, that's, that's, that's totally a bad not judgment offensive, call. But, but I think that, but there is something about uh, touting the company brand and believing yeah. in believing in your organization. And I really felt like he was there to pay his bills and to get out of there. And he had nothing nothing positive no positive contribution right uh to uh to what was going on at all are you totally in fact this is a great experiment you need to get the email of the manager and you need to email the, the manager and i'm dying to hear what happens because as you've said many times and i agree with 100 percent, it's not about the mistakes you make it's how you correct them yep yep i yep. totally think you should do that just to see what happens yeah i think you're right i think I'm you're right you to it okay all right, let's do I it. I mean, unless you say you don't want to do it, but no, it sounds I do like want you... to do. I do want to do it because I don't want anybody else to be to be right. put into that circumstance like I was uh, yep. last night. I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's fair. I think when you go in somewhere, and it wasn't like I spent a million dollars in this restaurant, but it was forty bucks, and it mm-hmm. was it was me, and I had a, you know a good meal, and I had a uh, or a good. It should have been a good meal, <laughs> and I and I had my beer, and I didn't even get a Budweiser. I got actually a, a you know a regular kind of like a big guy's beer. <laughs> <laughs> all right you know hey, Strick, it's, I, it's I, interesting too about like it, I, we're probably at least 35 minutes in now but you know united real quick the whole united thing where they dragged the guy off the plane we talked about it extensively yeah. um the, i don't have any of the specifics in front of me but first of all they they settled with him very quickly right and the the response from his lawyer was united has taken total responsibility and they've you know lived up to whatever Everything I'm hearing from this, everything that United is doing, they're basically like, you know what? We fucked up. Yep. We are we're they're not saying we're glad this happened, but they are saying we need to take a serious look at our entire company, at our entire approach. And I mean, really, I th- I think it's going to make a change and it could mm. be a good thing. That's good. That's good. Maybe we have another Southwest potential on our hands exactly. then with, uh, with a company like United. And maybe maybe uh something very positive will come out of this really horrible situation. Exactly. Exactly. So we're hoping that this restaurant actually becomes Southwest and Ray uh, ends up disappearing into the world of uh, the FAA. <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be a good plan. <laughs> All right, let's. Oh, are we? Uh, do are we doing another topic? Or are we getting out of uh, here? No, we should wrap it up. I think we're at least thirty five minutes in. Although we had a, we had our technical problems, so we had a split recording, and I I, <laughs> I can't tell exactly where the fuck we are because of that. Um, but hey, you know it's all good. I think we're good. Well, let's let's start. Let's jump into the rest of the topics on thursday all right we'll jump into the rest of the topics on thursday let's see today is tuesday show so if you didn't tune in yesterday it was Alyssa Alyssa dare nelson and you Mm -hmm. did not want to miss that show go back and listen a wednesday's episode who's on wednesday i forget Uh, who's tomorrow tomorrow hold on i got in front i I I did my research already steve osh steve oh Ulsher? Ulsher. Yeah, Ulsher. Steve Ulsher. I actually am going to a, a meeting that Steve invited me to in September. So you don't want to miss uh, you don't want to miss Steve's um, Steve's episode. Really good, <laughs> man. We go. You talk about me and Strickland going off the rails. I get off the rails pretty quick with Steve, and it's and it's obvious very quickly that he is a he is definitely Funkin fan material. So I'm hoping nice. that Steve is now a listener to the show uh, show as well. And then um, Friday's episode, crap. Friday was a good episode too, and I'm I'm blanking on who it was on Friday too. How do you? You know it was a good episode if you don't know because who it was. i remember it was judy holler uh, oh judy that's right i remember looking at a whole like the whole spreadsheet about who's who's coming on the show judy holler judy's incredible she is a um uh an improv professional that has uh, made the the transition over to the speaking world and she's hilarious and i've been friends with judy for the last several years uh we actually are also in september or no i think it's in june we're speaking at a um at a, a conference together in las vegas Sweet. the uh, mpi uh internet the meeting planners international meeting professionals international meeting in uh in june so uh tune me? in say it again you didn't invite me you're going to vegas without me oh you can come what's the date 
uh, I think it is June twenty second or something oh, like that. Shit, it's like late in the month. Yeah, it's definitely yeah, late. Yeah, I month. got my family reunion starting June thirtieth. That's gonna be too. If it was beginning of the month, I could do it. Oh well, wait a minute. It's not overlapping. You you can. Yeah, do but it. I'm gonna be out all week the next week. I couldn't go to I couldn't go to Vegas one week, come home for a day, and then go off to to family reunion for a week. It's just wait, too, so too close. you actually have a family that has like reunions, like you get together? No, my wife's family does though. My family <laughs> does not do any shit. Your like Your family that, doesn't no. even like each other. Exactly, they don't like me. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What uh, what happens at a family reunion? Can we talk about that on Thursday show? Sure, why not? We'll add okay. one more topic. I think we yeah. got through a good number of topics today. Yeah, that's good. Well, the, see, this is what happens when we have the re- the wheel of funkery in place. Know, it really right? does force us to get back to uh, get back to the topics at hand. Exactly. All right, let's uh, let's wrap up here. Nice guy community never underestimate the uh, the value and the power of nice. Uh, Steve O'Brien, go ahead and take us out of here. For the nice guys on business, and in accordance with my court-mandated community service, I'm Steve O'Brien. Only 27 more voiceovers to go, and then maybe, maybe they'll let me leave the state and take this ankle bracelet off. Hey, there was no opportunity to oh. play this during the show, oh, but I really like it, so I'm going to use it for our outro music. I'm going to figure out how I can put Steve O'Brien under, underneath this. going to be our, our Easter egg? Yeah, you ready? Uh-huh. <laughs> Here comes a harmonica. All right, underneath the bed of the Rockford Files, which will probably get us, uh, what is it, on flags on YouTube or something? Yeah, okay. Uh, Steve O'Brien, go ahead and take us out here. I don't know what the hell I'm going to have Steve saying over the Rockford Files, but I'll find something. Hey, as... Wow. That's actually pretty long. <laughs> this, was, this was when TV shows had, like, real intros that were more than 30 seconds long, you know? Jeez. Although, you know what? This was actually a hit. Oh, there it is. There's the end of it. Why am I reading this copy? This sucks. Oh, that's right. Because they are paying me. Act like you care. Act like you care. I'm sorry. I just threw up a little in my mouth. <laughs>